or in some cases decertify a union. For decades, American labor law helped working people come together to have a voice in a job, which in turn gave them a say in our economy, in our political world, and our public life. This freedom to organize, which is enshrined in the National Labor Relations Act, and oh, by the way, United Nations Universal Declaration on Human Rights, has helped to produce the greatest, the greatest period of sustained and broad prosperity in our country's history. We all prospered and everyone did better, workers and business alike. The National Federation of Independent Business, a well-known organization that has less to do with small business and more about right-wing, anti-union, political and ideology, filed the appeal and needed two companies to serve as plaintiffs. John Brinson, the former CEO of 24-7 Fitness Clubs, was more than an eager participant. Brinson has publicly stated that unions serve no purpose, be it in the public or private sector, and only inhibit businesses. And John Brinson believes in absolute control because nobody can run a business better than John Brinson. Just ask him. Or so he would have you think. The plated building behind me is a testament to John Brinson's enormous ego and inability to run a profitable business. Health clubs typically run with a very strong cash flow, stronger than most businesses. Nearly 10,000 members paid an average of $40 per month, giving 24-7 fitness centers about $400,000 a month to work with cash. Apparently it wasn't enough. Just one year ago, the fitness center run by Brinson cited over $12 million in debt, including a mortgage for over $8 million. An agreement was reached to have Brinson step down as CEO and relinquish control of his empire to a consultant who apparently is well qualified to run the three remaining health clubs. Even Nova Bank, who held the mortgage, said, at the initial cash collateral hearing in these cases, this court was able to observe firsthand Brinson's inability to demonstrate a command of basic accounting and financial management issues affecting the debtors and their business operations. This is the CEO. Their words, not mine. But I guess it's the fault of organized labor. Brinson was forced to negotiate a new lease in Trexertown due to cash flow problems, but that, of course, is the fault of unions, too. Brinson was unwilling, unwilling to seek assistance with a restructuring officer forcing the court to take action and had him step down as CEO. Oh, shit. Yes, he is. But this, but this would have been solved if he didn't hang a poster in his facilities. That would solve all the problems. And lastly, look around this neighborhood. You'll see the presence of huge cranes that haven't been in this you know, city downtown for 50 years. There's over $600 million in economic development right around us. There'll be 2,000 new workers coming in downtown Allentown and people moving into the city to live here and raise their families. Allentown's on the move. And John Brinson saw fit to leave a prime location at 6th and Union and letting it rot. Another poor decision. And you simply can't hang this on the neck of unions. Brinson loves to criticize companies for sucking on the teeth of government. Yet according to the city of Allentown, John Brinson and 24-7 fitness clubs received a 10-year tax abatement to the tune of over $320,000. I paid my taxes. I didn't get any break, but John Brinson did. I guess it was those damn unions again. The bottom line is that if 24-7 fitness center employees want to join a union or not join a union, it is their decision. It is not Greg Potter's. It is not John Brinson's. It is their decision. I thank Mr. Brinson for his service in the armed forces. And it seems to me that perhaps he was a much better paratrooper than he is a businessman. Contrary to the popular beliefs of individuals like Brinson, unions can and do work well with many businesses. Last month, the Lehigh Valley Labor Council honored one of the most prominent business people in, in the Lehigh Valley, Mr. Lee Butts of the Alvin Butts Company, for his work with the Lehigh Valley Building Trades, making sure that the buildings are done with professional, competent union construction workers. Last year, we honored Just Born and Bimbo Bakeries for a unique partnership in sharing employees during a particular uh, unique business cycle. Just a few years ago, unions partnered with the city of Allentown to work with Verizon for their last files build out in the Northeast. This partnership provided union jobs during the construction, union jobs servicing and installing the service, value for the Verizon investor, and more choice for cable, internet, and phone for residents of the city of Allentown while bringing in additional revenue without raising taxes. Imagine that. Just last month, the Lehigh Valley Chamber of Commerce honored the Lehigh Valley Building Trades for donating over $1 million in cash and in-kind donations over the last two years during the most horrific recession construction has ever seen in the state of Pennsylvania in the Lehigh Valley. We still came to the plate. The 41,000 union members in Lehigh Valley may volunteer at your local food bank or senior center. They're your baseball coach. They carpool with your kids. They deliver 
your mail and packages. They restore your electricity and maintain your communications and entertainment options. They drive you to Manhattan to watch a play and they clean your streets. They put out fires and protect you from those who want to do you harm. They shop at your stores and they serve on local boards. They're unions, people who brought you the weekend. And I will remind folks there are some fitness clubs like, like uh, Curves and Gold Gym who recognize that the people in unions are not bad people by providing a discount. We wish John Brinson all the best and hope he stays retired. Thank you for your time. Thank you very much for coming up. Andrew, thank you.